Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ. You can also check out my personal channel at Aaron Rift. I got crazy cat videos on there and all sorts of different videos. So check that out. We are one week away now until the WWE TLC pay-per-view. Only a one week break before another WWE pay-per-view coming up. It's insane. But yes, there is another pay-per-view coming up, which means NoDQ.com will have you covered with the latest news, rumors, and my live results coverage, which I know you all love. Anyways, let's get started with your questions today. Remember, you use the hashtag PAIV to send in a question or PAIV1 if you're a first time asker. First one comes from Mr. Yuck, definitely not a first time asker. Apparently the rumor is that Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal is a non-title match at Survivor Series. If true, would they have Jinder win to get him more heat? Alright, we're starting off this video with a rant. If this is true, and this is something that Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer is reporting that this is a match that WWE is planning for Survivor Series to be the main event. If this is true, what is WWE thinking? What is WWE smoking to come up with this match? Who in their right mind would say, oh boy, I want to see Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal. I cannot imagine anybody wanting to see this match. Is it just because of the fact that it's Survivor Series and WWE wants to do Raw Champion versus SmackDown Champion? It makes no sense. Who would benefit from this match? Will the fans benefit? No. Brock Lesnar and Jinder Mahal sounds boring. What's going to happen? Lesnar's going to suplex the Singh brothers? Wow, how exciting. For me at least, it's crap. It's boring. I'm not interested in seeing that match. It feels like a mismatch. And does it benefit Brock Lesnar? Not really. Brock Lesnar beat Braun Strowman at the last pay-per-view. So Brock Lesnar beating Jinder Mahal, what does that even do for Lesnar? Nothing. It means nothing. Even Lesnar beating up all three guys. It means nothing. Jinder Mahal winning. Does it benefit him? I suppose so. It could benefit Jinder Mahal, but if you have the Singh brothers interfering, it's the same thing with all of his other matches. And it's just not believable. It's not believable for three guys to even beat Brock Lesnar. I, I still think in the storyline, Brock Lesnar would destroy these guys. Jinder Mahal has done nothing to really have any kind of credibility and, and be a credible force against Brock Lesnar. So even the three of them, even if it was a three-on-one match, for me, I would not be able to suspend disbelief. I don't think those three guys in the storyline could beat up Brock Lesnar with the way that they've been booked. I don't buy it. So there's a major credibility issue here. And the thing is, if Mahal did beat Brock Lesnar, how does that make any sense? If you're trying to build up Lesnar for Roman Reigns, you have Lesnar beating Braun Strowman, Samoa Joe, winning a fatal four-way match. Why would you have Lesnar lose to Jinder Mahal to set up Lesnar versus Reigns? Makes no sense. I, I'm almost at a loss for words, even though I just said a bunch of words. It just, it really boggles the mind that this is even something WWE would consider. So I hope this is wrong. I hope Meltzer is getting wrong info because this, this sounds like a real dud of a main event if this is, in fact, the Survivor Series main event. I'm not a fan at all. And if they do that as the main event, we might as well just give the victory to the NXT War Game show without even having to see the shows because... Come on now. Really? Moving on here. This one comes from B. Hill. Hey Aaron, what's your opinion on WWE firing Jimmy Jacobs over taking a photo with the Young Bucks and posting it? Petty? Yeah, it is quite petty to say the least. Now, my gut feeling is WWE was perhaps just looking for a reason to get rid of the guy and him posing for the photo was WWE's excuse to get rid of him. But it's really stupid because 
Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, AJ Styles, they've all appeared on the Young Bucks YouTube series, Being the Elite. So that's one thing. And the other is, what's the big deal? I mean, you're going to fire a guy over a picture? It just feels like Jimmy Jacobs is in the wrong place at the wrong time. WWE is angry about the Young Bucks showing up outside of Raw and why they would be. First of all, it's a bad idea to even be frustrated about it because it's, it's showing the Young Bucks and the indie fans that it got under Vince's skin, just like the DX invasion got under Bischoff's skin. If I was Vince and I was WWE, I would try to no-sell it as much as possible. So firing a guy or releasing him or whatever happened doesn't seem like a smart move. Like Joey Ryan said, it's it's uh, selling for the Young Bucks and the Bullet Club by doing this. Um, I don't get it. it. It's a bad move by WWE if, in fact, that was a factor. They decided to let this guy go. And apparently... Jimmy Jacobs has a great reputation in WWE. Chris Jericho has praised him. Jericho said it was Jacobs that came up with the list of Jericho concept, among other things. And um, a former WWE writer recently praised him. That is up on ODQ.com, by the way. So it's really weird. It's really weird that WWE would let this guy go if, if that was a factor. Just doesn't make sense to me. But then again, this company, you know, booking Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal. Um, this company does some weird things sometimes that really don't make any sense whatsoever. This one comes from Boogeyman, or 79 Boogeyman, or Boogeyman 79. Do you think that the Harper and Rowan Broken Brothers gimmick is used because the, the Hardys can't? Well, they're not being called Broken, so I, I don't really see it as a copy of the Hardys gimmick. Um, it feels to me like they're doing a Vikings gimmick or something that's more of a knockoff of like Game of Thrones. I'm not even sure what it's supposed to be. Um, it's just a couple of scary guys with, with hammers. It almost feels like a recreation of the Highlanders, like some European Neanderthal guys coming in. I, I really don't know what it is. Again, it makes no sense to me. It's WWE. What are they doing here? These guys were fine before. And they were actually feuding, and all of a sudden they're friends again with no explanation whatsoever. It's just, it just feels like the writers had nothing for these guys, so they just threw something at the wall, and somebody said, hey, let's make them a couple of Neanderthals with hammers, and somebody said, well, that's a good idea, or at least it's the best idea we got, so let's go with it. Um, I think it's stupid. Not a fan of it. Harper, I feel bad for the guy. I've said this several times now. Around WrestleMania... He was doing really well, and he should have been in the WrestleMania match. WWE should have called an audible and put him in that match as a triple threat at WrestleMania. He was hot. I mean, I felt he was hotter than either Bray Wyatt or Randy Orton, quite frankly. And now the guy is just reduced to carrying a hammer with the guy he was feuding with a couple months ago, and all of a sudden they're friends again. Just crap. Wrestle crap for sure. I, I should really give it a chance and let it play out, but man, this just feels like they're they're just hoping something will stick. They're throwing something at the wall, hoping it will stick. This one comes from Yusuf, and this is a first-time asker. Who would benefit the most from turning heel among the three Shield members? We all know the obvious answer with Roman Reigns, but... It is what it is. He's the top guy as far as WWE is concerned, so it doesn't really matter. He's getting the mixed reactions, and WWE thinks that's a positive. Rollins, yeah, I think he could benefit from a heel turn, but I think of the three, Dean Ambrose could really benefit the most. I've said this many times in video. I think Dean Ambrose has some potential with his character. If he turned heel, we could see a little bit more Brian Pillman in Dean Ambrose and let him be a real lunatic because they call him the lunatic yet he doesn't really do anything that's crazy it's basically just weird humor that Dean Ambrose does on television you know stuff with the potted plant and these little goofy one-liners but he doesn't actually act like a lunatic a lunatic is somebody who should just be completely out of their mind somebody you fear somebody who just does these these outrageous things, reckless behavior, and we don't see that out of Dean Ambrose. He's not a lunatic. 
by that definition. And I think a heel turn would really help him explore that character and we could see that character um, take on a new life and, and go in different places that we haven't seen yet. This one comes from DJ Birdie Booster. Do you think Candice Michelle was underrated? I thought her transition from model to women's champion was awesome. I'm sure she's a nice person. I know Jeff has met her before and says she's a nice person, but I did not feel she was that good of a performer. I felt she was very generic, personally. Um, she had a good look, obviously. She was a model, so that definitely helped her for that era. But as far as in the ring, you know, nothing that she did stood out to me. And really, I mean, while she looks good, WWE has a lot of good-looking women. And I don't feel like she really stood out in that category either. Um, so I just think she was, she was all right, but nothing special. I definitely was not focused on the segments that she was in. I mean, that's for sure. So I, I do not feel she was underrated. But what do you guys think? Do you think that I'm wrong on that? Do you think that she doesn't get enough credit? Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. This one comes from Aaron Rift is number one. If not Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, which match do you want to see at WrestleMania? We already saw Cena and Reigns, and it looks like we are not getting a rematch. There's no point in doing a John Cena versus Roman Reigns rematch. They did that one-off match. Reigns won. That should be it. Reigns and Lesnar, not really a big fan of that either. I just feel like it's too obvious that Roman Reigns will get his win back, and... I'd rather see something a little bit more unpredictable. I'm not sure what to do with Roman Reigns for WrestleMania because Reigns and Cena was my initial idea for WrestleMania. I guess they could do Reigns versus Strowman again, but it feels like that feud has pretty much run its course. We've seen that match several times. Um, maybe Reigns versus Samoa Joe again. We could revisit that feud. There's not a lot of options. Maybe Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton, Raw versus SmackDown, but I, I feel like they're just going to go with Reigns versus Lesnar for WrestleMania, and I really don't know what else would be fitting for Roman Reigns. You could do Reigns versus Ambrose if Ambrose turned heel, but again, anybody you put against Reigns is probably going to be cheered as a babyface anyways. So whatever they do at this point, I guess we all just have to accept it and go with the flow. Uh, there's not a whole lot that can be done. Uh, WWE is going to do what they're going to do. And regardless of what the fans say, at the end of the day, they're going to do what they feel is best for their business. This one comes from Ryan. Is it just me or does putting the shield back together make just about as much sense as breaking them up after evolution? For me, it makes a ton of sense because, number one, the goal is to get Roman Reigns cheered more by the fans, and so far it's working. So on that note, it's a great idea. On another note, they're all baby faces, they're all on the same brand, that might not last. So why not take advantage of the opportunity? I'm not sure why you say it doesn't make sense. To me, it makes perfect sense to do a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion at this time when you have all three guys on the same brand, they're all baby faces, and it helps Roman get over when the company's desperately trying to figure out something for this guy to get the fans to cheer for him. So I'm not sure what you're trying to, to say with that question. You don't think it makes sense? I'm, I'm curious if you would elaborate more why you think it doesn't make sense. Just wondering from your end. From a business perspective, they're already selling a ton of t-shirts, so it's making the company money. So I don't see how it's a bad idea in any sense, in any form. This one comes from The Sinful Saint. Is Shinsuke Nakamura just a big ball of charisma? It appears the strong style isn't meshing well with the WWE style. I think part of the problem is him trying to cut promos and WWE trying to make him a sports entertainer. You look at Goldberg. Goldberg got over WCW just by kicking ass. That's what people wanted to see. Goldberg came out there, he did his two-minute squash matches, and he got over. He didn't even have to say a word. Sting got over really well in WCW by being silent. With Nakamura, I think having him talk is a mistake because with the broken English, 
there's a bit of a disconnect with American fans. And you know, when they're, when they're not understanding what he's saying or having trouble understanding him, that's when the what chants start coming in. And when casual fans at home start hearing the what chants on television, they see it as, well, this guy must not be that big of a deal. The fans don't really care about him. They're chanting what at him. They're not taking him seriously. And also, Nakamura has been held back. And, you know, he is getting up there age-wise. But still, I feel like they're not letting him have the best match possible on television. Look at, look at Sami Zayn and Nakamura. Fantastic matchup. Match of the year, as voted by the NoDQ.com visitors. That was incredible. But we haven't gotten to see that kind of match from Nakamura. I'm shocked WWE hasn't done Nakamura versus Sami Zayn. Let them try to have a better match than that TakeOver one. If I was WWE and I wanted Nakamura to get over, I'd say, all right, Nakamura versus Sami Zayn on the next pay-per-view. You guys go out there and you top your first match. No limitations. Go out there and steal the show and have the best match possible. That's how you get Nakamura over. But by calling him the artist and having him come out there and try to cut promos and then that segment where Mahal was making fun of him and then it took Nakamura two weeks to finally come out there and finally do something about it. Yeah, that's going to hurt his character. And working with Mahal in general is not going to do Nakamura any good because Mahal sucks. I mean, again, I'm not trying to knock the person. I think the character just isn't cutting it in WWE. And, um, you know, the matches just haven't been living up to the expectations, what you would expect from a WWE main event caliber match. And Jim Mahal is a good wrestler, but he's a good wrestler in a sea of great wrestlers. There's definitely better wrestlers on the roster than him. And those guys are not being utilized as well as they should be. This one comes from Nick. Hey Aaron, who would you say is or was the greatest on the mic in the WWE? I did do a series on this years ago, The Rock. The Rock has to be number one when it comes to cutting promos. The Rock would be number one, Ric Flair would be number two, and then everyone else is number three. That's how I've always seen it. Um, the Rock is just, he has the Midas touch when it comes to talking. When that guy is on a microphone, it's magic. The guy can talk like nobody's business. He can pretty much own anybody on the mic. Ric Flair might be the one exception to the rule. Ric Flair's right up there as far as a great talker goes. Ric Flair can come out there and he he can just he can create magic when he's out there on the microphone. Um, there's nobody quite like Ric Flair. Ric Flair and The Rock, each of them are one of a kind when it comes to their characters and their their mic skills and talking. Um, so, yeah, th those are definitely my top two, and everybody else can fight for that third place spot. And I've done videos. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do another one on a no DQ panel, um, do an updated video about the best guys on the mic, and, and get some different viewpoints. But for me, it's easily Rocket number one, Flair number two, everyone else number three. This one comes from ASG. Should certain 205 guys go back to NXT for developmental, or for de for development and come back as non-cruiserweight wrestlers, who would you choose for this process? I think a better idea would just be to abolish the cruiserweight division or not limit the cruiserweight guys to that division. It does feel like there's a symbolic glass ceiling being part of the cruiserweight division. Um, so I think, I think the problem is that the cruiserweight division is in this little bubble and you don't really see these guys do other things outside of the cruiserweight division. And uh, I was never a fan of that from the beginning, you know, doing the, the different rope color and changing the lighting and the effects. I, I think the cruiserweight division should just blend in as part of the, the main roster and let the cruiserweights do other things besides compete in cruiserweight matches. So I think that that's really the most important thing. It seems like most of the guys that are in the cruiserweight division already have the fundamentals. There's no need for them to go to NXT. Um, you know, maybe you could repackage a few of them and and change up their characters. A few of the guys that don't seem to be connecting with the fans. Um, I mean, it feels like guys like Cedric Alexander are doing well, but it it also feels like there's a glass ceiling for those guys, and they're not really able to um, go out there and and give it the best performance. Again. 
if, if they were allowed to go out there and have the best match possible, I think that they would be getting over more. But I also feel like um, WWE has, has booked the cruiserweights to a point where fans don't take it seriously. The fans see the cruiserweight matches as the bathroom break matches. And, you know, it looks like they're trying to change things up with Enzo being in the main event segments. But again, Enzo's the only guy that has the credibility. Nobody else does. They're all clumped together into this group, and that's not helping their cause. And I got this one here from Garrett. Do you think Braun Strowman should win the Royal Rumble? I would definitely prefer that over... John Cena or Roman Reigns, like I said on a previous video, I think a new guy should win the Royal Rumble this year. If not Nakamura or AJ Styles, I think Braun Strowman would be a very logical choice considering his size and just how dominant he is. Um, he would be a great choice to win the Royal Rumble if WWE was going to go all the way with him. But he already lost to Brock Lesnar, so I'm not sure WWE has any plans on putting him in a WrestleMania main event. But what do you guys think? Who should Braun Strowman face at WrestleMania? I'm curious to know what you guys think. Leave a comment. Let me know. That'll do it for this edition of No DQ Video. Thanks as always for watching. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest regarding the TLC pay-per-view. I will be back this week with No DQ Live. I will, I will be there in Portland for Raw, so the No DQ Live will be a little bit later than usual, um, around midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific. And then Tuesday night, another edition of No DQ Live. And then we'll have our predictions. It's going to be a busy week, so stay tuned. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time.